Assalamu alaikum. This is uh, Yasin. I am a software engineer by profession. My question is the Hindu pundits and scholars agree that the Vedas and other Hindu religious scriptures prohibit idol worship, but initially because the mind may not be matured, therefore an idol is required for concentration while worshipping. After the mind reaches higher consciousness, the idol is not required for concentration. What do you have to say about this? The brother has a question. The Hindu pundits and scholars, they agree that the Vedas is against idol worship, against making image of Almighty God. But they give the logic that initially because the mind is not matured, you require idol to concentrate. Later on when you reach higher consciousness, idol is not required. If this is the logic, I would like to say that we Muslims have already reached the higher consciousness. You don't require... You don't require any idols to concentrate on Almighty God. We have already reached the higher consciousness, if this is the logic. But now let's analyze. Once I was having a discussion with a Swami from the ISKCON, Hare Ram Hare Krishna, you know, it's there in Bombay. Hare Ram Hare Krishna. He came to IRF and we were having a discussion on idol worship. So he gave me the example that Brother Zakir, see, when your son asks you, why does it thunder? So you tell him that Ai ma chakki pisti hai. Ai ma chakki pisti hai. That is the grandmother in heaven, she is grinding flour. Why? Because the child is innocent, can't understand. Therefore we give this. Similarly, human beings, because they are immature, initially idol is allowed. Later on when they get matured, idol is not allowed. So I tell them, and I told this Swami, from his con, Hare Ram Hare Krishna, that I will never tell my child, when he asks me why does it thunder, that Ai ma chakki pisti hai. Grandmother is grinding flour. You know why? Because to tell a lie is haram. It's wrong to tell a lie in Islam. You cannot tell, even if it's a white lie, you can't say. In extreme cases, certain cases, someone puts a gun and you lie, that's the difference. Otherwise, normal circumstances, why should a person lie? Because if I tell my son that I ma chakki pisti hai, grandmother is grinding flour in heaven, when he goes to school and when the teacher teaches him that the thundering after lightning is due to expansion of rapidly heated air, he will think the teacher is lying. And afterwards, when he comes to know the fact, he will say, my father was a liar. <laughs> so this is the problem, that why should you say such wrong things? And this philosophy is common amongst all the human beings. Common, most of them, if not all. And you know, we have like those people who stay in a building, like when they play with the children, you know, they throw the toy out. Crow has taken it, you know? You do the action of throwing the toy out of the building, Kawa leke gaya. Then you find even your child is throwing out toys. <laughs> and then when you ask these parents, why is your child throwing out toys? Wo everyone does, sab karte, sab children pickte. The mother will tell, all the children throw out toys. So if my child throws, what is great? All the children don't throw. It is because most of the parents do this trick. Kawa leke gaya. So even he wants to do that trick, even he throws it out. My son, Alhamdulillah, we are staying in nine story. Nine story in Masgon. My son has never thrown any toy. You know why? I have never played the trick with him. Kawa leke gaya. So you teach wrong things and your child remains following wrong things. Best is to give the answer. Simplify. Simplify and give the answer. To the best of the understanding, I know the child, many things don't understand. Give the answer in a simple way. But if you don't know the answer, you should have the guts to tell the truth, I don't know. But most of the children, especially nowadays, they won't take the simple answer. If I tell my son I don't know, he will tell me, Abba, why don't you know? <laughs> so what happens, then we have to do a homework. We have to go and find the answer. It educates us as well as our children. But never tell a lie. You can never let your child grow up on falsehood. There are other pundits, when I have discussions, they give me the example. Let's see Brother Zakir. We do know that Vedas are against idol worship and it's wrong to do idol worship. But initially in standard one, because the mind is not matured, idol worship is fine. But when they graduate, then idol worship is not required. So I tell them that if a person goes to school in standard one, the fundamentals, the basics of any subject should be strong. If the basics and fundamentals are strong, in future, even the structure will be strong. If the basics are not strong, 
the structure will not be strong. So if a teacher teaches in standard one, in mathematics, two plus two is equal to four. Even after he goes to standard three, four, five, when he passes school, when he becomes a graduate, even if he does PhD in mathematics, yet two plus two will always remain four. He may learn trigonometry, algebra, logarithms, but the basics of arithmetic addition, two plus two, will remain the same. If the teacher teaches wrong things, two plus two is five, or two plus two is equal to six, in standard one, what will happen to the student when he graduates? Therefore, the basics should always be strong. The fundamentals should always be strong. And these scholars, they know very well, the fundamentals of the Vedas are regarding concept of God, that God has got no image. You cannot make any idol of God. That's the fundamental. I ask these people that if you know that the followers of a religion are doing wrong things, it's your duty to correct them. If your son says 2 plus 2 is equal to 5, will you keep quiet? In standard 1, you say, no, no, let him graduate, then I'll tell him that 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. Will you say that? You'll correct him initially. You won't wait till he graduates. As much as you can explain, you explain. So if they know the Vedas are against idol worship, it's their job to tell the people that this is the fundamental of faith. Even in the initial stages, you can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without an idol. Hope that answers the question.